there won't be a Bills Bengals game. We'll get back to you with more details later. The NFL wanted to be able to say, we've canceled Bills Bengals, and here's how we are dealing with the issues that the Bills and Bengals playing 16 games will create when the time comes very, very soon to finalize the playoff seeds in the AFC. So last night, around 9 o'clock or so, the NFL issued its release with the proposals that have emerged following a meeting of the competition committee that occurred at 6 o'clock last night. The competition committee has recommended these proposals. It gets convoluted fairly quickly, but let's focus on the first aspect of this, Peter. We've got some things to say about this generally. I know I do. But for now, here's what's being proposed to the owners who are meeting virtually today at noon because they have to approve this. It's an important point to remember for later. As it relates to the AFC championship, there could be a neutral site for the AFC championship. And it basically depends upon what happens this weekend. But... And let's go through it. Scenario one, the Bills and the Chiefs both win or both tie. A Bills-Chiefs championship game would be at a neutral site. Number two, Bills and Chiefs both lose and Baltimore wins or ties. A Bills-Chiefs championship game would be at a neutral site. Scenario three, Bills and Chiefs both lose and Cincinnati wins. A Buffalo or Cincinnati versus Kansas City championship game would be at a neutral site. What they're trying to do here is eliminate the perceived unfair advantage to the Chiefs that flows from no winner emerging on Monday night between the Bills and the Bengals. Because if the Bills would have won, all they have to do is beat the Patriots on Sunday, and they're the number one seed in the AFC. And if the Bengals had won, they have the number one seed potentially within their grasp. So this is the way to eliminate the unfair advantage. Not eliminate, but to minimize. Because the Chiefs, if they end up the number one seed, still get the bye. But they don't get an Arrowhead Stadium game in the AFC Championship. So this is that thing that has been cobbled together, Peter, by the competition committee pending approval of 24 owners. That is what's going to be teed up coming up here in about four hours and change. Okay, so, you know, there are 900 things to say about this, but I'm going to say two, and then I will yield the floor to Mr. Speaker from West Virginia. Um, I would, I'd make the first point, the first point I would make is that um, I said this at the time uh, when this whole discussion started, but whatever the outcome in this and whatever is decided, I'm not going to say it's a dumb idea. You know why? Because it's impossible. You cannot make a totally correct, right, justifiable decision. You cannot. Because it's going to be unfair to some parties and more fair to other parties. Period. Is it fair, for instance, uh, you know, to to the Cincinnati Bengals who now face the prospect that if somehow, no one thinks they will really, but if somehow they lose to Baltimore on Sunday, they're the, they're the hottest team in the AFC. If they lose to Baltimore on Sunday and they lose a coin flip for the playoff game, the Cincinnati Bengals very likely will not play a home game in these playoffs. And... How right is that for a team that was up seven to three and driving to make it 14 to three, you know, 10 minutes into a game Monday night and they're on fire right now. And and again, and again, but all of that flies out the window. Okay. Because there is no right decision. Second thing I would say, and just very quickly, um, I think this is one of those extraordinary times in NFL history where the the rules makers, Rich McKay and the competition committee and and you know the Department of Football Operations. I thought of this last night, Mike, when you texted me with what you're about to talk about. And I just said to myself, you know, 
there needs to be a line in this in the rules and it needs to be one of those lines that somehow some way they okay it with the players association but in the event of absolutely extreme circumstances that no one can foresee the commissioner has the power to wave his magic wand and say this is what we're going to do because in a democracy mike Everyone is always going to be argue, arguing about what is the best thing to do. And I hope for the sake of everyone involved in this story that whether teams like this or teams don't, I can't imagine the Bengals are going to be very happy with the outcome here. But whoever likes it, whoever's ox gets gored, says it's an extraordinary circumstance. It's an extraordinary year. Let's just swallow it and move on with our lives. I agree with you completely. And the concern I have, before I get to that, I, I want to make sure everyone understands the Bengals aspect of it. You alluded to it. And this is the one that just seems strange to me. I understood all along this idea that there's a certain element of inherent unfairness to the Chiefs simply showing up and beating the Raiders tomorrow and getting the one seed simply because Bills, Bengals didn't have a result and the Chiefs catch the Bills based on winning percentage, even though the Chiefs lost both to the Bills and to the Bengals. That's where this is all coming from, obviously. Right. But for the Bengals, the idea that if they lose to the Ravens on Sunday, completing a head-to-head -head sweep by Baltimore over Cincinnati because there was a Sunday night game earlier this year when Baltimore beat the Bengals at home, the Bengals will win the division based on winning percentage. They'll be the higher seed on the playoff tree. They'll be three. And if the Ravens are six, and the configuration of the playoffs results in the Ravens and the Bengals crossing paths, they'll flip a coin to determine who's the home game. That is one of the most bizarre Frankenstein monsters I've ever seen the NFL put together or attempt to put together. What is that? You either resolve it based on winning percentage or you don't. Not with this codicil, this caveat, that if these two teams from the same division cross paths because the Ravens beat the Bengals twice, we're going to change our approach completely and make it a coin flip as to who hosts the game. And the Bengals would still be the three seed. Peter, that's what's so odd about this. The Bengals could be the road team in the wild card round and then the home team in the divisional round because they'd still be the three seed <laughs> moving forward. Isn't that weird? So... It's now, really one weird. of the questions I have. I, I would agree with you, what, Mike. What? I would agree with you. Of all the things that was that, of all the points that were made last night, this one feels the oddest. And I understand that they want to give Baltimore credit if they beat the Bengals twice. But that is the only thing last night that I thought. And again, I am not going to make a big deal of it because, you know, no one is trying to make a dumb decision. But I just thought that was a bridge too far. Well, and Peter, it's a result of what happens when publicly, none of these teams will be saying anything that would suggest right. disagreement or consternation or frustration with the the circumstances that they have to deal with privately privately oh my god privately <laughs> it is right and it tells me it's on steve Bishotti, it's on baby yeah, St <laughs> steve bashotti the owner of the ravens did a better job lobbying the competition committee than mike brown the owner of the bengals did period because bashotti came out of it with this weird thing that gives the ravens a potential home game by virtue of the fact that hey, we swept the Bengals, even though they have a better winning percentage than we do, we swept the Bengals, so we get a coin flip. And, it was, you know, at one point, Peter, there was talk about resolving Bill's Bengals with a coin flip. Resolve that game with a coin flip. I thought they should have played Madden instead. But resolve it with a coin flip and count the result and then figure out the playoff tree that way. There, there was talk of that. And this is my broader concern. All week long, now, I don't want to say I was led to believe this, 
There was nothing ever said by anyone from the NFL, and there have been multiple conference calls this week regarding DeMar Hamlin, regarding his status, regarding what comes next. No one has ever said this to me. We have a rule on the books for handling canceled games. We have a rule. We're considering changing that rule. We're identifying various options for possibly changing that rule. It's never been couched that way. The way that I've viewed this, because no one's ever told me differently until last night, we don't know what to do. We've never dealt with this before. There's no rule for it. We have to come up with something. And that is fundamentally different. And look, I understand there's no good solution. And as you said last segment, it may not matter. Home field advantage doesn't matter like it used to. They're getting obsessed with home field advantage. Road teams win all the time. The Bengals went on the road last year to Tennessee, the one seed, and they won. They went to Kansas City, and they won. Road teams are winning in the playoffs. The 49ers beat the the number one seed last year in, in the NFC, in the Green Bay Packers. So it may just be that folks are obsessed about things that are ultimately irrelevant. But... What the NFL is considering here, and I want to make sure the owners understand this, because I have a feeling someone is trying to slip this through without explaining to anyone what's really happening. And Katie Blackburn, the executive VP of the Cincinnati Bengals and the daughter of Mike Brown, has been trying to sound this alarm internally. What they are proposing is a change to the rules that are on the books during a season. And Peter... I've been doing this over 20 years. You've been doing this longer than me. They do not change the rules during a season. During the season, we keep a list of all the rules that seem screwy, of all the rules that seem unfair, of all the rules that seem inappropriate, and that's part of the annual process of meeting, talking, competition committee, making proposals, owners get together, and they decide which rules they're going to change or not change. It never happens during a season. And I want them to understand they're standing on the banks of the Rubicon here with this because there is a rule in the policy manual applicable to club operation 2022, plain as day. If a game is canceled, you go by winning percentages. There's no neutral site exception or coin flip. You go by winning percentage to determine the playoff seating, period. And I I know people would say, well, this is an extreme situation. Well, anytime a game's canceled, NFL game's canceled, whatever causes the cancellation of the game is going to be an extreme situation, whether it's illness, whether it's injury, whether it's weather, whether it's anything. It's going to be an unusual extreme situation. You could make that argument for any cancellation. Well, this is an extreme situation. Yes, because the game was canceled. Let's get past that. There's a rule on the books. So why is the rule on the books not good enough? Number one. And number two... Why are you changing the rule that's on the books during the season? And that sets a precedent. I just want them to understand what they're doing here, Peter. We hear all the time we need to have integrity of the game at the forefront of everyone's mind. There needs to be public confidence in professional football. Changing the rules on the fly, making it up as you go. I don't know what that does for public confidence if people understand that's what's happening. And I just want to make sure everybody understands that's what they're proposing. And I want to make sure the 32 owners who are going to vote on this today realize the significance of what they're doing. And, you know, you're right, Mike. I, that's why, in my opinion, there ought to be a, a rule in the books that says we've got to have trust in a person to be able to wave a magic wand in events when events are so incredibly um, different than what anybody could have ever foreseen. Now, I'm not saying that it's unforeseeable uh, what happened on Monday night, but in this particular case, I first of all, I know that there will be 9,000 fans who are going to scream about something because their team has gotten... Uh, the 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 bad end of the stick, let's say. But I do think that you have to have a common sense. You've got to you've got to have trust in the person who leads your organization. And this is one of those times where, in my opinion, nobody could have nobody could have thought that this was going to be a factor in arguably the biggest game of the year. So I I guess I look at this 
And I say, yes, you're right in saying that essentially they are rewriting the rules. They're making up the rules as they go along and they are, okay? But I think what should be done at the end of this year is I think that Demoris Smith, Roger Goodell, and and the and the policymakers on each side should have a meeting and should say, we need to be able to fix things when they get out of whack uh, in an absolutely extraordinary time, and this is one of them. And I agree with you 100%, Peter. And when I sent you last night the page from the 2022 Policy Manual for Member Clubs, you noticed right. the section below the procedure for canceled games. Section G has the competitive policy for canceled games. And in English, what it says is we're going to do the playoff seating based on winning percentage. That's what that means. Just below that, Section H says that the commissioner has the sole authority to investigate and take appropriate disciplinary or corrective measures if any club action, non-participant interference, or emergency occurs in an NFL game which he deems so unfair or outside the accepted tactics encountered in professional football that such action has a major effect on the result of the game. So, just below the section where it says if we have to have a canceled game, we're going by winning percentage. Cancellation for any reason. Canceled game goes by winning percentage. Below that, they give the commissioner the power you're talking about. So what you're saying is they need to go back to that rule and give the commissioner the same power in the event of a canceled game. And I agree, but you don't do it during a season. That's the point. You've identified a great solution. We do this all the time. We see crazy rules happen. We see outcomes that aren't fair based upon the application of a current rule that's on the books, and it usually comes from the rule book. They don't change it during the season. They note it. And they add it to the list of the things they're going to discuss. How many times have we heard Dean Blandino say, I'm sure that will be discussed in the offseason? Yes, it's never discussed during the season because there's no change to be made during the season. That's my point. I, right. I don't look, I, yeah. I don't want to turn this into a crusade or a soapbox. This is very fundamental and this is very basic. And I think that's why no one from the league has told us that's what they're doing. No one from the competition committee, other than Katie Blackburn, has said, Hey guys, this is what you're doing here. You're changing a rule. During We have a rule. May not like it. May not seem fair, but there's a rule. You're talking about changing a rule during a season. And once you do that, Peter, you invite chaos. Because anytime in the future, there's a rule that somebody doesn't like that gets applied during the season and they want it to go away. What are they going to say? Well, we did it in 2022. We can do it again. Yeah, and that's what is the quandary about this particular case. Quandary becomes... Listen, what happened in this particular case is not fair. So how do we fix it? And that's where, in my opinion, and again, look, no one's going to want to give anybody potentate-like power in this particular situation. But in my opinion, potentate power is really what is required. But you're right. Changing the rules in midstream, you know, does open up uh, the proverbial Pandora's box. And it's something that can be used in the future in other situations. I just think in this one, I do understand the, um, the, 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 the sort of exception that's being made. And I don't get particularly outraged by it just because I'm not going right. to get outraged by whatever happens in this thing. I agree with you completely, but it's a far different perspective when you say we already have a rule on the books. People may, because like you said, yeah. nobody should be upset by the outcome. Okay, fine. There's already a rule on the books for how you handle canceled games. So nobody should be upset. They've agreed to this. They've thought about this. They've envisioned this. They've envisioned the possibility of a canceled game, and they have a rule on the books. Peter, I first became aware of this concept of winning percentage by your reporting from two years ago about the pandemic. Nobody was saying we're going to take a careful examination of all relevant facts and circumstances if games are canceled because of the pandemic. I mean, let's just apply this to 2020. If there had been a key late season Monday night game, highly relevant to the AFC playoff tree, and they wouldn't have been able to play it because too many of the offensive linemen of the Buffalo Bills have COVID. 
they would have canceled the game and they would have gone on winning percentage. There would have been this whole, well, is it fair to the Bills? Is it fair to the Chiefs? Is somebody getting an unfair advantage? They would have done that. They were going to go by winning percentages. That's what, what bothers me here. As you said, maybe there should or shouldn't be potentate powers here. What I think they're trying to do is de facto exercise potentate powers. The league office ramming it through the competition committee, the competition committee ramming it through ownership without the owners understanding what they're doing. That's my point. I just want to make sure the owners understand what they're doing here because I don't think anybody's explained it to them this way. Hey, guys and gals, you're changing the rules on the fly, something that you have never, ever done. Just want to make sure you're aware of that before you do it. That, that's, the, that's the whole point because there's already a rule. It's different if there's no rule. Then we got to come up with something. There's no good solution. We'll pick the best of an array of bad solutions. Well, wait, we don't need to do that. There's a rule on the books. That's, that's my only point. And I want them to understand the impact of doing this. And that's why in times like this where there are weird facts and there are different emotions that make us feel like we should just do something, that this doesn't seem right, that there needs to be a solution that fits the facts. No, 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 no. We have a rule. We've already thought of it. We've already considered what happens when there's a canceled game. People may not like the outcome. Well, they, people don't like the outcome of the application of most rules. Let me ask Every you this rule question. Works to someone's advantage or disadvantage when applied. Let me ask you th- let me let me ask you this question. If this applied in this particular case and the and Kansas City was 14 and 3 and Bu- uh, Kansas City wins this weekend is 14 and 3. Buffalo wins this weekend and is 13 and 3. I, I'm not involving Cincinnati because the Bengals have a fourth loss. But if Kansas City is 14 and three and Buffalo is 13 and three, but Buffalo uh, beat Kansas City in Kansas City earlier in the year, and Buffalo, by virtue of an extraordinary circumstance, was not able to play its 17th game. Here's my question. Would you have said the rules should apply, they should go by winning percentage, and we should not consider doing anything else? Well, let's go back to two years ago. Exact same facts. The only difference is the Bills couldn't play that 17th game because all their offensive linemen have COVID. They've already decided this is what they're going to do. That's the point. They've already decided this is what they're going to do. And head-to-head result is a tiebreaker. It's a tiebreaker. It's not something to apply in any situation other than if there's a tie. And if you're going to go by winning percentage, there isn't a tie. That's why the Bengals-Ravens thing is so freaking weird to me. Oh, well, the Ravens beat them twice. It doesn't matter. There's not a tie. That's a tiebreaker. The tiebreakers only apply in the event of, wait for it, a tie. That's where this just whole this whole thing... I, I, the horse got out of the barn prematurely on this, Peter. Nobody bothered. And this is, I, I, look, I'm not blaming anybody. Because, again, like I said earlier, as it relates to all the various hot takes we've heard this week, these are people of goodwill who have the best intentions, and they're trying to fix an unprecedented and very bad situation. I get it. I support it. But that's where, yeah, I was texting with somebody last night, an executive with one of the teams involved in this rigmarole. I got the SAT word today, Peter. Rigmarole. Um, like Jerry it. Seinfeld has a bit at the beginning of one of the various episodes of Seinfeld where he essentially says that lawyers are the people in society who read the rules on the inside of the cover of the board game. Remember, and that, that's, that's always, and, and most of you out there are like, what the hell's a board game? When Peter and I were kids, when we weren't <laughs> watching one of three TV channels, we were playing board games. And when you got a new board game, and Peter, I'm sure you were the same way I was, you flip it open, the rules are printed on there, and you read them, and you refer to them while you're playing the game. What are the rules? And and so the whole point is, did anybody ever sit down and bother to look at the rule? And did did they do it? And if they didn't, that's fine. It's a crazy week. Or did they do it, and they say, "Eh, we we don't care about the rule. We're going to come up with our own rule. I, there's a fascinating behind the scenes as to how this all transpired. My point is this before the owners vote. And that's the, the, the mere fact that they have to vote, Peter, 
tells you what's going on here. It's going to take 24 right. votes, not a simple majority, 24 votes, a super majority, because they are changing an established rule on the fly. And this whole point is, I just want them to understand it. And the other thing too, Peter, and I've asked the league this question, haven't gotten an answer yet. Is this all or nothing with these two proposals, the AFC championship? That's the big question. And what's the alternative? Or is it one what's at the a time? Alternative? Yeah. Yeah. I don't, I, know, I don't think the there's alternative any is the way that's on the this won't pass. Yeah. Yeah. I don't think there's well, any way this isn't going to pass. I would be, I would be shocked if it didn't pass. Cause I, they, I, I, and I, again, and again, there may be some teams that say we don't like this. There might even be some teams that vote against it. I don't know. But I think if it gets out who voted against it, it, it wouldn't be great for that team, I think. Well, and see, th that leads to PR issues, and that leads to other concerns. I, I know that there are some folks who would say, basically, screw Mike Brown. We can stick it to Mike Brown. Mike Brown always votes against yeah. everything. He's a pain in our ass. Let's stick it to him. Whoa, 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 whoa. This isn't about sticking it to anybody. This is about whether or not you're going to respect the rules that are on the books or whether you're going to get into the business of changing the rules during a season. And the fact, Peter, that no one from the league has couched it that way tells me they know deep down what they're doing here. They know they're potentially setting a bad precedent that could create unintended consequences. They're always afraid of unintended consequences. This could create unintended consequences. So I suspect that at a minimum, Mike Brown and or Katie Blackburn will be making the point I'm making. And the question is, will eight others agree with them? That we, What's wrong with the rule that we have? And are we prepared to do something we have never done? Despite how, you know, think of all the times over the years, Peter, where we have learned through the application of the limitations on the replay rules that there are some screwy ass scenarios that are incredibly unfair. They never change them during the season. Hi, it's Mike Florio. Thanks for watching PFT on YouTube. Hit subscribe for the latest news and analysis from Pro Football Talk.